Hello everyone, I am just here to show you the tutorial for using the box templates. Um, I've been making, let me see if you can see that, these teeny tiny um, just tidbits to add when you know your journal just needs a little something else. And I don't really have a good container for them, so I wanted something that was flatter so that it could kind of spread out and my, I could reach in easier because it's just hard to get out of these little Tupperware. So I just decided to create some flatter boxes. I did a template. I'll be doing some that are already um, designed with pattern paper on them. But for now, I just have the template and you can put any paper on the back. Now, this one I already cut out. Um, it's just a rectangle. Um, and I've already glued paper on the back. You could print pattern paper on the back of the template and then you'd be good to go. So um, I'm gonna kind of just show you how I did that. So this one I did not cut out yet. So bear with me because I really want this to be a tutorial where you can see what's happening. So let's go ahead and give it a really good layer of glue. I love this Scotch Permanent Glue Stick. Um, it's by far my favorite glue stick that I've ever, 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 ever used. Um, it dries quickly and it dries really solid. So, love, love, love. Five stars, 10 out of 10 and all of that. All right, and I'm gonna glue my pattern paper to the back. And keep in mind, you could just print that so you don't have to glue an additional paper on. Um, either way will work fine. Now we have these little things that are gonna be the base to go inside the boxes in the bottom and in the top, just to add some extra reinforcement and to give it the patterned paper because otherwise it would be white. And um, so you can go ahead and just cut those carefully out. And keep in mind that this is the side that you're going to see when it's in the box. So one nice thing about the ones that I'm going to be making is you can control um, the portion that you're gonna see on the patterned of the patterned paper. Because normally I would like like this kind of a thing centered, but when you just glue paper on the back, you can't really control what part is going to show when everything is folded and put together. So there's that, there's that. Now we're gonna go ahead and notice these four little scissors. Can you see those? They're pretty tiny. They used to be here, 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 and here as well. And I will show you why. When I was a little girl, I used to make these boxes almost exactly like this, um, a little different because we didn't have cool things like scoreboards and templates. We just had Christmas cards. <laughs> and I remember taking all my parents' Christmas cards and making them into just dozens and dozens of these tiny boxes. I didn't even have anything fun to put in them back then, but it was just fun to make them. So obviously I could use my, I call it my zippy cutter. <laughs> I don't know what you would call it. You're just fancy cutters. Cause these are just big, long straight lines, but I figured why not? We're on camera. It's not going to take long to cut them. So you get to enjoy the good old fashioned scissors way. And it's kind of nice to see um, that you can just do it with scissors. Okay, let me see. I'm gonna put these on here just so you can see the instructions. So here we are, we've cut out the entire rectangle and now we're going to fold along these dotted lines. Now this will be a little different just because I'm gonna score these and then it's gonna be folding in the other way than I normally would fold them. Does that make sense? Like normally I would then fold it in towards itself. So I'm going to score kind of light so I don't mess myself up too badly. I'm just 
gonna score down there and I like to turn it at this point. You don't have to. I just do because personal preference. And I'm just making sure those lines are lined up with my score lines. There's not an exact measurement for this one. Um, if you want to try making it yourself, this is a quarter of an inch. And on these bigger ones, it's one and a quarter. Oh, this is three quarters. Did I say one quarter? Three quarters and one and a quarter. So hopefully I got that right. But it's just easier with the template for me anyway. So we're just scoring and scoring. But I really do want you to be able to see this whole process start to finish. So sorry for those that like the quick and easy videos. We don't get that one today. All right, now I need to fix my digital because, oh no, I don't. This one, we don't have to cut anything out. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Um, so remember those little scissors that were here, 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 and here? So we're gonna go ahead and cut up to this corner where these two intersect. So past the first dotted line and then up to that intersection and just cut, cut directly on that line. Doesn't need to be anything fancy. And if you want, you could go ahead and score it before or fold it and everything. It doesn't really matter either way. All right, let me move that. And we're gonna go ahead and score these over. I probably should have, now that I think about it, folded it before, but that's okay because now I've got these three pieces to work with instead of one. That's all right. It might be nice for those corners or it might make it so they don't line up. <laughs> Either way, we'll get it. All right, and then we're gonna fold that again and just give that a nice, nice fold. All right, so then you can open that up and we're gonna repeat that on every single side. So, come in here. I don't really like how that score line feels, so I'm kind of forcing it open a little bit more and then fold it. And I like to do the double fold with those scores because then you can make sure it's all gonna fit when you fold it for the final product. Perfection. All right, one more. This piece we're working on is the box lid. So it's a little bit larger in diameter down here, but it's shallower um, in depth. So you'll see what I mean when I get it all completed. And last. All right, so just like that, we're done. So then we go to our longer side and we're gonna fold it in and then fold those flaps just like this. And if you want to do an extra score right here on that corner, you can. And that is, this is how that would look, just like that, to get a nice tight corner, which never hurts. So, all right, there's that one. Then we're gonna do that same thing on this side. Fold those in so I can score those. I really like to push those hard on those scores, so hopefully you can kind of hear what that sounds like. Now you're gonna fold all these flaps in. They're gonna overlap. When you're ready to put it all together, you can go ahead and just glue. But I like to come through and just glue these two sides down like this so that they're in place. And then I'm just gonna come up here and see where those overlap. I'm just gonna give it a good glue right here. 
There we go. And there's that one. And if you need just a second, you can hold that or you can grab a little clamp and just clip it in place for just a second while it dries. Either way. They kind of almost stay together on their own anyway. You almost don't need any glue, but definitely glue it because it will kind of finalize everything. And I'm gonna be keeping little bits of ephemera in here. So I do want it to be nice and solid. All right, then this is coming up and this comes tucking right down in there. Nice and tight. Give that a good press. Really focusing on those corners, making sure they're nice. Lovely, okay. Now this is the lid, so we get our bigger rectangle. If it doesn't quite fit, um, <laughs> it's it's fitting real good. I'm not gonna be able to get it back out to glue it. Um, but if it doesn't fit, then you can trim it down just a hair if you need. I'm gonna grab my awl <laughs> to get that baby out. There we go. But as you can see, it's nice if it's nice and snug because then you won't see the white and kind of ruin the illusion. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue that piece in. I guess I could ink around it, but it's okay because it's gonna it's gonna be in there nice and snug. All right, and then you're just gonna push that all down. And then if you want, you can come through and just ink everything. I think I'm going to make some different labels too that I'll have available because I'm envisioning this as just helping me with some of my storage. I don't like, I like to have things visible when I'm working with them. So this will be such a great way to have lots of little bits and have them be easily accessible for me. So I'm excited. All right, and there's our lid. And because we glued paper, we printed the initial template on lightweight cardstock. This is a nice, sturdy, solid lid, which I love. Love, love, love. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the box bottom. Now, by the way, I made one and I kept the bottom white and I actually really love that look. Like it was, just a clean line. It kind of seemed like a jewelry box or something. Just kind of, it was really pretty. So, um, yeah, don't be afraid to just try leaving the bottom white and maybe just stressing it with a little ink to give it a little antique -y look. That'd be really pretty. you want to measure that one and a quarter and two and a half now you're gonna notice on this one that I have these little sections that say to cut out and you'll see why in just a minute it's just because the flaps that when you fold them they're gonna actually overlap each other because this is a deeper box so I went ahead and we're just gonna remove a portion of that so that those flaps don't overlap each other 100% because we don't want that. If they overlap each other 100%, we don't have anywhere to, it will fold up inside and make a big mess, so. But this time I'm gonna go ahead and score first before I make my cuts and that's gonna make my life easier. So we should have done that on the other one, but that's why we learn. <laughs> and I'll probably forget the next time I do it too because I've made several of these. <laughs> I just forget. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and cut from here again up to that intersection right there. Ooh, I missed that line, that 
that's okay. All right, there. Having cutting issues today. It's all good. <laughs> and then I'm gonna come back through and I'm just gonna snip these off. And obviously this does not need to be perfect because that's gonna all be folded in and you're not even gonna see it. Ah, there we go. All right, so again, this is the longer direction. We're gonna start with that one. We're gonna go ahead and glue right, oh, <laughs> the lid was on. We're gonna go ahead and glue right there. Fold it down. And then we're gonna come up. I'm gonna go ahead and score those edges to make that nice and tight. And then I'm gonna repeat that with this side. Fold those two flaps in and score beautiful edges. These come up and see if we wouldn't have cut those edges off, this would stick out to here past that line. So that's why we do that. So hopefully that clears all of that up in your mind. And I did make the bottom a little deeper. All right, good. I'm just making sure that will fit when I fold it. But I love how solid these are because you keep the paper that you're folding in and it just helps reinforce everything, which I love, 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 love. All right. We've got one beautiful side coming down. And you might notice that that takes up a little depth so that inside here, it doesn't quite reach down to the bottom. Um, you can really kind of force it if you want, but I don't mind that. But just keep in mind, that's how it's going to go. Just push it down there as far as you can. Going to tighten those corners up. And then this is always like the funnest part because I think when you ink it, it kind of really comes together. Now notice that on this side, the stripes go this way and on this side, the stripes go this way. That doesn't really bug me, but if you use an all around patterned paper, you won't run into any kind of placing placement issues like that. Um, or if you buy the kits that have the paper already on there, then I would adjust for that um, when I make the digitals and make it so that they're all going the same direction. So it's one of those one of those things you're gonna have if you're dealing with a specific directional piece of paper and just gluing that onto your template. All right, now this beauty is gonna go in the bottom of that. You can see it doesn't take very long and it's a super satisfying project. Oh dear, I should have cut that one a little shorter. I'm not sure why that one didn't line up. Maybe I put them in the wrong. No, I didn't. Oh, well, I'm just going to trim a hair of that off and I can fix that on the template digital. This is actually the first official one I made from my final draft of my template. Oh, no, it doesn't fit. I shouldn't have trimmed it. Ah, <laughs> I must have just had it in wrong. Oh, well, we're going to split the difference. Come on over. That's okay. That's how we learned. So no, I did not need to trim that. I just needed to try again a little harder. All right, now we've got white belt down in the bottom, but that's okay. All right, so there is the bottom of the box and there's the top and I made it a little bit bigger, you can see. So that comes on and off super easy, but look how cute. I love it. And it's really sturdy. So now I have all these cute digitals. These are my black and white set. I have grungy set and like a red and white and black. Anyway, so now I can put, even if I wanted, I could just put a sample on the front of my box or on the top, whatever. 
so that when I'm looking for the right color that I want, I can just look and know which color's in there. So anyway, I'm gonna be making bunches of these. This paper here, if you're interested, this is in the June subscription kit, which you can also just buy all by itself at um, the web, the new website, pinkmonarchprints.com. Um, so you can get those papers if you like this style. They're really like a kind of a fun Victorian gentleman kind of a style. Um, and the templates at the Etsy shop. So I will link that as well, but I'm excited to make a bunch of these and to finish fussy cutting out all my teeny tiny things. I just turn on a fun show and fussy cut and it's just kind of fun and relaxing. But that is how you put together those boxes using that template. So satisfying, super sturdy, and just easy to use. And it's gonna be so much easier to sort through there and pick out what I wanna grab. So I love it. Okay, anyway, there you go. Thank you so much for watching and we will talk to you soon. Bye.